Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I've got a really fun project for you. We're gonna paint these little mini Polaroid landscapes and we're gonna use the supplies that come in this very inexpensive kit from our sponsor, Bianyo. This kit comes with a chart that you paint yourself so you'll be able to make your own swatch chart for your watercolors. It comes with some watercolor paper and we're gonna cut these sheets in half to make our Polaroid pictures. And uh, this paper is, I think about four and three quarters by eight and a half. So you just chop that right in half at four and a quarter inches and you've got two perfect uh, postcard pieces or Polaroid pieces. And it comes with 36 watercolors. These watercolors are good for beginners. They are um, quite bright and vibrant. They do have a bit of a chalky finish to them, but um, they're not, um, you know, they're not dull looking. It also comes with an assortment of brushes. So you really have everything you need to get going with the exception of tape. I'm taping down my paper to my table. Because these are such small landscapes, I don't really need to be able to tip them around too much. I'm making sure I have a wide border at the bottom and narrow borders at the sides and the top to give me that Polaroid look. Here is the finished picture so you can get an idea of what we're going for here. And this is a wonderful project for a first time watercolor painter or if you wanna paint with your children. I know we're doing a lot of homeschooling these days um, with our remote learning at schools during the pandemic. It's a perfect uh, project to get painting with your little ones. And um, it's a lot of fun for grownups too. So we're gonna start off by adding some blue to the top of our postcard. And you can use whatever blue you like. I like to use um, a combination of ultramarine blue. Sometimes I add a little bit of Prussian blue to it or cerulean blue to, um, to cool it down a little bit. But um, you can look outside, go for the blues that you typically see in your sky. We want a nice bright blue though, because we are going to lift some clouds off. Now here's a tip, whenever I add more color to my sky, I add it to the top because I like to have my skies more intensely colored at the top and fade out at the bottom. You can even brush over with a dry brush and lift up some of that color at the bottom like I'm doing here. I'm just blotting my brush off uh, when I take it off the paper so I get that gradation. You see that? I just dab it on a paper towel and keep working till I get the ombre effect that I'm going for. These paints are very easy to work with too, and they lift up really well. Like you're going to see here with our blotting, take a paper towel or tissue scrunched up real tight and press it down to make your puffy cumulus clouds because it's a nice summer day. We want to make sure that we have nice puffy cumulus clouds on there. We don't want any rain clouds. Now, if you go overboard and you blot off too much paint, don't worry. Just repaint your sky and start all over. Uh, this paper is robust enough to handle a little bit of wear and tear. Just don't rub the paper. You always want to blot straight up and down. After you've got your sky in, we're going to start with our water. And you know how we use that flat brush and we went side to side to cover a large area? Well, this time we're using that same flat brush, but we're using it on its chisel edge and moving horizontally so we get fine thin strokes. That's a great use for the flat brush. It can be quite versatile, especially in landscape painting. So I'd highly recommend that you give that flat brush a workout and see what it can do. The thing I like about this method is that as you're working, you can leave uh, slices of that white paper showing and that's gonna look like reflections on the water and make it really um, look like ocean with a little bit of waves and uh, it's just really pretty. Any of the blues that you used in the sky are fair game to add to the water. I don't like to paint my water a solid blue. I like to use different shades of blue because when you look out at the sea, you're gonna notice that there are patches that are darker and patches that are lighter. And if you've got trees nearby, you're gonna see some greens in the water too, where you've got, um, you've got some reflections happening. And that's what I'm gonna do here. Just pick up a little bit of green on my dirty brush and I'm just gonna add that into the water and let it blend in with those other blues. I haven't wet the paper before this, um, before painting here because I knew it was small enough that I could cover it without things drying and giving me hard edges. And this paper has a good amount of sizing too that allows my paint to stay on the surface and and be nice and workable. Sometimes you have issues with watercolor paper pilling on you, which is when you get those little balls of like paper and it's very um, difficult to work on. The paper in this kit is really wonderful uh, and would not give any hardship to a beginner student, which I really like. Now, if you're an advanced 
watercolorist, I don't think you'd enjoy this paint as much, but if you're trying to get started, you're trying to get your kids into watercolor, the kit has everything you need, so and it's very affordable. So I really like that. Now here I'm using a combination of grays and blacks, which if you know my, my tutorials, you know I usually mix my grays and blacks, but I'm going right for the colors that are in the palette this time because there's 36 colors, and I thought it might be a little bit less intimidating for somebody that's just getting started. Um, and I'm just basically blobbing on color haphazardly. Now I'm going to take one of my favorite tools, which doesn't come in this kit, but you can make it for free. Just take an old expired credit card or used up gift card and chop into about eh, four or five pieces and then use those little shards of gift card to scrape. And it gives you perfect rocks because it gives you those um, flat planes and edges and it makes scratches in the paper so that when you go back in with paint, it can settle down on those scrapes and, and cracks and look like real rocks. So um, I just really love that technique. And if you've followed me, you know how much I love painting rocks. And I even have a whole rock painting section in my watercolor landscape workshop, which I will link down below in case you're interested with that. So now it's time to add some foliage and I'm going to start off with some tree trunks and a smaller flat brush. Now experiment with your brushes because you may find that you have an easier time painting a thin straight line with a flat brush on its edge like I'm doing here or you may find that you have an easier time with a round brush. It's completely up to you. I find that students that have tremors or their handshake, a flat brush will work a lot better for getting those fine lines than a circle brush. So if you have that, um, if you have that tendency if your hand tends to shake or maybe you drink too much coffee and you're painting in the morning and you want to and you shake a bit that's going to help you by using a flat brush don't go overboard with your branches and tree trunks because you can always add more in later you just want to add the structure of where you're going to be putting in some leaves now we're going to dab in some foliage here and these can be leaves from the trees that we just painted they can be um, bushes they could be really anything that gives a little bit of green the reason i'm building up a lot of uh, foliage and rocks around the edges of my painting is because it gives a frame and by making a frame it just kind of makes your landscape finished so anytime you're painting a landscape and you're just like ah something isn't is missing it just doesn't feel done see if you can do something like putting a tree on the edge or maybe dangling some leaves or something or maybe even some dark storm clouds around the corners anything that can help frame your work is going to make your picture look a little more finished so that's uh, that's what I like to do with these little postcard or little Polaroids it just helps give it a um, a nice look now you'll notice that sometimes my hand goes in the way of the picture and that's because I'm holding my brush at a 90 degree angle with the paper the reason I like to do that is because it gives you a lot of control and it lets you make really fine lines just by flicking your wrist or really pinpoint um, pointillism dots by tapping so you get a lot of control over your brush that way um, so I recommend trying that if you feel like you can't get a fine enough line or you're having some issues with brush control. Now there are lots of greens on this kit to pick from. Generally when you're using a student grade paint that has a large variety of colors you're um, oftentimes better off just to use the color pre-mixed because with the student grade paints a lot of times they have fillers in them that um, make them a little less vibrant if you go to mix them and mix them and mix them so what i tend to do is i will uh, leave my leave a little color on my brush from the previous color then pick up that color right from the pan and dab it in there and then sometimes i will mix the colors from colors i already used like the blues from the sky adding that into a green just to keep everything harmonized but without cutting down on the vibrancy and saturation of the colors um, that's why there's so many colors in these student grade kits it's so uh, beginners that don't really know that much about color theory can still get the colors that they want without a lot of fuss so um, use that to its advantage and there you can see I've dabbed in some more shades of green also some green mixed with a little bit of black like the trunks have and um, kind of filled in that area now on the other side of our little Polaroid, I want to put some palm fronds hanging down. So I'm going to start off with a dark center line and I am using a small round brush for this because I want to get that nice and fine and this kit does come with a couple really small rounds to take advantage of. And then with that dirty brush, I'm picking up some of that kind of sap green color and I am just going to flick out the little fronds from the center stem, those little leaves 
and I'm just gonna build my palm fronds like that. Again, using your brush at a 90 degree angle with the paper, paper is going to give you the most control. And you can paint quite a few of those little palm fronds before you have to reload your brush. If you want a thicker line, just press a little bit more, but keep that brush at a 90 degree angle with your paper to get the most control. It's better to paint your um, your leaves too thin at first. You can always go back in and thicken them up or join some together if you need to, but you can't make them thinner again once you've painted them. So um, just kind of keep that in mind. If you were to scrub out that branch and start again, you'd be scrubbing out your sky behind it. So you want to be kind of careful. This is really nice though, this kind of silhouette technique because it just looks so pretty. It's so easy and um, it just gives you that nice frame like we talked about. About earlier so put as little or as many palm fronds as you want in there because it's your landscape it's your imaginary world it's your beautiful summer day you can paint it however you want to I decided I wanted my rocks a little bit warmer so I'm adding some yellow ochre and browns to areas here and there and then I'm going in with blacks and deepening up the shadows and creases in the rocks. I want to get that texture because it's so close to the viewer. It's kind of a focal area. It's in the front of the picture and um, I just wanted to warm that up a bit. You can also add some yellow ochre onto the palm fronds if you want to for little splashes of sun because sunlight will kind of hit different parts, reflect off and give you those warm bright areas. So um, you know think about how sun is hitting things, how light is hitting, hitting things, what things would be in the shadows and go from there. And now we've got our picture done so we can remove our tape. Just make sure that your paper's dry before you remove your tape because if your paper's wet, that's when your, your paper would wanna tear on you. And there you have it, there is your first postcard. Isn't that fun? Now to start the other two, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna tape down your picture the same way and that's that will be the basis for all of our Polaroid postcards. But I think that is so pretty. It was so fun, so easy, and a great beginner project. Now the next one we're going to do is even easier. We're going to do a sunset with a lighthouse. Now you can actually do the sunset and put whatever you want in silhouette, but a lighthouse is fun and easy to do. I'm gonna start with my lightest color, which is my yellow, and I went with a nice medium warm yellow. And then I actually grabbed some fluorescent red because I figured why not? This kit comes with fluorescent colors. I'm gonna play with those. And added that in. Then I picked up a little opera pink and a little fluorescent purple and added those in as well. Now I didn't pre-wet my paper because it's a small size and I didn't want to dilute my paint too much. If you pre-wet your paper and then paint on top, your colors will blend better, but you'll also notice a bigger shift from dry to wet or from wet to dry. So to keep my colors vibrant and to know what I have, I decided to work on dry paper. Now I'm using a mix of the um, the red, the pink, and some Prussian blue to make this kind of dull, purpley color for mountains in the, in the background. And then I'm drying my paper. And now I'm gonna layer over some black and do my silhouette area. And that's going to be a hill in the foreground. It's gonna be the lighthouse and it's going to be a little fence. I'm doing this with one of the larger rounds that are in the kit here. Now the brushes in this kit are on the smaller side, so perfect for the size paper, but you probably will eventually wanna get some larger brushes if this is your first foray into watercolor. And now I'm just gonna paint a very, very simple little lighthouse. I started off by just making um, a line up for the body of the lighthouse, making a line across for the um, kind of observation deck area, and then adding um, just a couple little lines for either side of the glass area, and then a little triangle on top. Now keep in mind, you can do whatever sort of building you want there. You could do trees, you could even do palm trees. It's completely up to you and what you're looking for. And then I thought putting a few seagulls flying would be really fun, and there's that one. So easy, so quick, and that would be adorable just put on the front of a greeting card and mailed off to a friend. And this final landscape we're going to do is also very simple. It's uh, using a lot of the techniques from the first landscape we did. And we're going to start off with our blue at the top of the paper and ombre it down just like we did on that first, um, that first tutorial that we did. And we just want to make sure that we get a nice soft effect. And then we're going to lift off our clouds just like we did before. So I am making this one a little faster 
and um, vary the size of your clouds. If you want to get a little more advanced, try pinching the tissue smaller and making some smaller clouds. It's, it's really fun practice. And like I mentioned before, if you don't like how it turned out, repaint it, try again until you like it. Now I'm taking some yellow ochre with a little touch of burnt sienna and making my sand here for the shore along our tropical paradise beach. And then I'm adding some sap green to the edge of that for some grass. And then I'm going in with different shades of blue for the water. I want kind of like a soft aqua color towards the shore. And then I'll be bringing it into those darker tones that I used in the sky using the chisel edge of my flat brush. Now try to keep your horizon line nice and level so that it looks like it looks good. It doesn't look like all the water is going to slide off the edge of the earth. And, um, and then you want to let that dry before you go on to paint anything else. So we're going to have like a little almost peninsula kind of coming in on the edge of the paper, kind of on the right side there, or I don't know if you call it a pen peninsula, but just a, you know, kind of like a jut out of rocks and a little bit of land. Uh, I don't know if it's big enough to call it a peninsula, but you get the idea. And I'm just going in and adding some darker foliage to that. And it's also going to be a little bit silhouetted because it is pretty far away. I want to throw in a palm tree for scale. So I'm starting it right off the edge of my little Polaroid and bringing it right up the paper. And that's going to help the picture have some depth. So that's another tip there. If you want your painting to have more depth, your landscape, have something start off one of the edges, have it start off the bottom and either reach all the way up to the top or reach pretty far out of the, like into the frame and have it overlap other features. And that gives you that sense of space and depth in your landscape. And I'm also going to be doing teeny tiny little palm trees on that little peninsula far in the distance. So that will also give us scale because if we see those tiny little palm trees back there, we'll be able to tell that that's far away. And then the closer palm trees will be bigger and we'll be able to tell that that's closer to us. And that gives the viewer a sense of depth and scale. So we know that those palm trees far away are as big as these palm trees up close. They're just further away. So they appear smaller. I hope that makes sense. Things, uh, things further away look littler. Um, things closer to you will look a lot larger. And by forcing that perspective in your paintings, you can just really put a lot of depth in there. And if your paintings have looked flat, your landscape paintings have looked flat in the past, you probably need something in your painting to show that scale. Or you probably haven't um, made your things far away small enough or your things closer big enough. I put in some palm fronds, just like we did the palm fronds in that first demo, and I'm throwing just some lava rocks in the water just for to add a little interest and to draw the eye through the scene, and then adding a little bit of ripples in the water with some blues, a little bit darker there. And that's, you know, pretty much all there is to that. I wanted a little bit of wet sand by the shore, so I darkened the brown there, and um, that, that's pretty much it. You can use your imagination and come up with so many different landscapes. Um, and especially with a little size like this, it is not intimidating. Um, this kit is so fun. I highly recommend it. If you're just getting start, started out in watercolor, I'll link it down below. Uh, you might want to pick up an extra pad of watercolor paper while you're at it because you're going to have so much fun with these. You're going to blow through that paper in no time because these little postcards are just addictive. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. Until next time, happy crafting. Thank you.